Hey guys, welcome back to another Blender 2.8 tutorial, and today we're going to be talking about 3D stabilization. So this effect is somewhat similar to the warp stabilizer that you have in After Effects, but of course we're going to be trying to make it completely inside of Blender. And the basic idea is if we can camera track our footage, then we can also 3D stabilize it. And the quality of our stabilization is going to be dependent on how good this camera track is. So if we get a camera track that has a high solve error, our stabilization isn't going to be very good. So some shots just can't be stabilized because we can't track them, but After Effects would would also not be able to handle these problematic shots. So pretty much if you can stabilize it in After Effects, then you can also do it in Blender. So this is the shot we're going to be stabilizing today. And you can see that the effect works pretty well here. Everything is definitely smoother, although there is a tiny bit of jitter. And if we wanted no jitter at all, of course, we would need to spend more time on the camera track. But let's just get started with this. The first thing I'm going to do is take my footage and convert it into an image sequence because that plays nicer with tracking. So I'm just going to go into the movie clip editor and then import in our footage. And just like any footage, this is going to have a resolution, a frame rate, and also a frame duration, and we want our Blender project to match these settings. So in the output tab, you can see our resolution matches by default, and we can manually match our frame rate, which in this case is 29.97. And then to match the project duration, I'm just going to hit set scene frames, which does it for us automatically. Next, we're going to go to the compositing tab and make sure use nodes is enabled, and then we can just delete this render layers node with X and shift A to add a movie clip node. Hook this up to the composite node and make sure that it's using the movie clip that we imported before. And you can also control shift click this movie clip node, which will automatically link a viewer node. And then this just lets us see what the output looks like. And then in color management, we're going to change the view transform to default. So our footage isn't altered in terms of color. We want our output to look the same as our input. And finally, in the output tab, I'm going to render this out as a PNG sequence with zero compression and just set an output path for that. Once that's all set up, just hit control F12 to render out the animation. So like I said, the next step is going to be camera tracking this image sequence. And I recently made a two-part tutorial series on camera tracking all inside of Blender. So make sure you watch that if you haven't already. Basically, you can see that I'm just tracking some features in the shot and trying to get a decent camera solve out of this. And I ended up getting a solve error of around 1.4, which definitely isn't great, but it should work decently for this effect. So if you can try to get this error under one, it just makes everything a lot more precise. And now that we're done with tracking, I'm just going to rename this camera to original because we're going to be adding it a second camera soon. And then in the constraints tab of our camera, I'm just going to hit constraint to F curve. And this is going to bake our camera animation into a bunch of keyframes. So we now have our location and rotation data fully hard set in keyframes. I'm then going to duplicate this camera with shift D and then right click to center it. And I'm just going to rename this into smooth. And the reason for this is we're going to use our original camera to project our footage. And then we're going to refilm it with the second camera, which moves around more smoothly. And that's the core idea of 3D stabilization. But don't worry, if you don't get it yet. So while selecting our new smooth camera, let's open up the graph editor down here. And here we can see all our camera animation displayed in the graphs. And some of them are very bumpy, which represents the bumpiness of the original shot that I filmed. So let's just smooth out these graphs. And if you search for smooth, you're going to see an option called smooth keys with the shortcut alt O and we're going to be using that for smoothing. So let's just zoom in here and then repeatedly hit alt O to smooth this out a bunch of times until it's looking very nice. And then when I hit play, you can see our original camera moving and also also the smooth version of it, which is slightly offset from it. And again, we want to project our footage from the original camera and then refilm it with the smooth one. So we're going to be projecting onto a sphere, which we want to move to the location of our camera. So while selecting the camera, you can hit shift S to move cursor to selected. And then while selecting the sphere, we're just going to move selected to cursor. And that pretty much does the trick. So now we can scale up the sphere. So both our cameras are inside of it for the entire shot. And this can be smoothed out with a subdivision surface modifier and then right clicking the sphere to change to to shade smooth. Now we can start setting up the footage projection and to do that go over to the shading window and then set up a material for the sphere with only the material output node. And we want our sphere to have the footage so just shift A to add an image sequence and then use A to select the same sequence that we exported before. And now we're going to enable cyclic and auto refresh and this basically means that the texture will update every frame and cycle back when the image sequence is all used up. And when we hook up our node you see that our footage is wrapped around a sphere and is updating. But but again, we want this to be a projection. So just add a UV project modifier. We can use the sphere's default UV map and make sure that you're projecting from the original camera, not the smooth one. And then we want to make sure we're setting our aspect correctly. So 1920 by 1080, when you divide those numbers, gives an aspect ratio of 1.778. And now we have our camera projecting onto the sphere as it moves around. And because we did our camera tracking, the footage is going to look pretty much stable on the surface of the sphere. So for example, if the shot moves to the right, then our 
our camera will also move to the right because it's tracked, and since they're moving together, it appears to be stabilized on the projection surface. And to get rid of all the extra tiles of footage on the sphere, just go back to shading and then switch repeat to clip. And this reduces it to a single copy and everything around it becomes black. And since we've also created a smoothed out version of our original camera, we can just film the sphere from a smoothed out perspective. So make sure you select your smooth camera and then go to view, cameras, and set active object as camera. And now we're looking out through our smooth camera, so everything is now stabilized. And of course the sacrifice is that we get some of these black borders occasionally. And when you see the most of these black borders is when the most smoothing is going on. So if you wanted to, you can always just zoom in your footage after you render to get rid of these black borders. So now we're ready to set up the export. Again, go to the render tab and make sure that color management has view transform set to default. And then in the compositing window, I'm going to delete most of this default node setup so we can start from scratch. And then really all we need to do is shift A to add a render layers node and hook that up to the compositing node. And then finally in the output tab, I'm going to set this to render as a video using MPEG-4 with high quality, then just set an output path for this somewhere and hit Control F to render out the animation. And there you go, you now know how to do 3D stabilization all inside of Blender. So I hope you guys found this tutorial helpful, and thank you guys for watching.